Think Fox Sports, the greatest collection of sports networks in the world. We are Fox Sports. Today on Fox Saturday Baseball, we've got one of the hottest teams in the bigs. That's right, the Orioles. They play host to the AL West leading Rangers, who send out one of the best arms in baseball, Cliff Lee. Up in Minnesota, the Twins have shot back into the AL Central League. Deep to right, and there it goes! They look to stay on target against Torrey Hunter and the Halos. Elsewhere, Bobby Cox and the first place Braves have added a new bat. Today, Derek Lee goes up against his former team at Wrigley. It's the dog days of summer, but Fox Saturday Baseball is always lively, and it starts right now. Welcome to the Sprint pregame show on Fox. Sprint, the now network. For the first time ever, the Fox pregame show hits the Charm City. A new manager with an old school attitude has given Baltimore's once proud franchise some renewed hope. Today, though, they're relegated to the role of spoiler against AL West leading Texas, which will trot out one of the best in the game. Cliff Lee goes for his eighth complete game of the year. And with that, hi everybody, we welcome you to Fox Saturday Baseball, presented to you today by Sprint. In just a few minutes, some of you will stay in Baltimore to see AL MVP candidate Josh Hamilton and the Rangers take on the Orioles. Others we're going to send to the north side of Chicago for day two of D. Lee is an Atlanta Brave. The former Cub received a standing O at Wrigley on Friday. He took an O for against his old squad, but Atlanta scored three in the ninth to take the series opener. Speaking of former heroes returning home, Torrey Hunter's back in the Twin Cities this time as an angel, and he's dealing with AL Central leading Minnesota. Joe Maurer, by the way, hitting just 429 since the break. First place Yankees in action against the Mariners this afternoon, and Russell the Muscle putting one all the way up there for the first time ever in New Yankee Stadium. Ouch! It's 19th of the year. Jorge Posada then with a two-run crank, his 14th. Now it's tied at four, and how about the kid filling in for A-Rod? Eduardo Nunez, his first ever big league hit, only 2,999 more to go, kid. Yankees lead it 9-4 to four in the ninth. Well, of course, the Yankees, they are the defending champs, but the kids from Chula Vista, California, they won the big one last year, the Little League World Series, and we are in the midst of finding a brand-new Little League champion. So why don't we get to know just how good the big leaguers were when they were only Mighty Mites? Best little league moment, first game in the All-Stars when I was 12. Um, threw a one-hitter and had 17 strikeouts. I think I was like 12, 13, hit a home run and hit like this red lobster. I think they said it was like 430 feet or something like that. My grandfather was sick, and I told my mom that I'd hit him a home run uh, to make him feel better. And I hit a home run, and going around first base, I turned around and pointed at my mom, and she cried. My father, he, was, he used to work a lot. He wasn't able to come and watch me playing. I hit a home run. And when I'm running the bases, it's come my dad jumping out of the crowd and just running with me. That was, that was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and I hit a grand slam and then a two-run home run in the same game. And then on my second one I hit, my dad goes running down the hill to get the ball, and that's probably my best memory. I remember getting to wake up really, really early in the morning and, and, and playing in 9 o'clock games. And we don't do that now, but uh, those were those were pretty fun to get to be with your friends and, and just have fun playing baseball. Uh, I remember being 8 years old, um, going to the World Series, and uh, a lot of the guys who I played with then are still some of my good friends today, so that's uh, definitely a lasting memory for me. I was 11 years old, I was at the baseball load, and I never hit a grand slam before. And uh, I remember the guy throwing a curveball. He hung it. It was like a gift from God. And, and I hit it and went out the park. And I could not believe it. I forgot to run around the bases. <laughs> oh, they're still just playing a kid's game. Coming up next, some of you will see the Rangers taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Will Torrey Hunter get that hanging curve against his old mates in Minnesota? The rest of you get the Braves and the Cubs. First pitch is next on Fox.
of a four-game set, and you can only see it on Fox. Hi, everybody, and welcome alongside the three-time All-Star Mark Grace. I am Chris Rose, and Mark, the Texas Rangers, they seem destined for the playoffs for the first time since 1999, and if they make it, they're bringing a legit ace for the first time ever. The guy we'll see today, Cliff Lee. Yeah, what a luxury it's got to be for Ron Washington. He's got a big lead in the West. Now he gets to hand the baseball to one of the best left-handers in the game. Well, it's been another tough season in the meantime for the Baltimore Orioles, but they seem to be pointed in the right direction. They are 11-7 and under their new skipper, Buck Showalter. What are they playing for over the last six weeks of the year? Well, what they have to play for right now is a very no-nonsense manager in Showalter. He demands accountability. I think these guys now are playing for their big league lives. And they have played very well against the Texas Rangers this year. Baltimore 5-3 and three against the AL West leaders. Will the O's be jumping for joy, or will those big-time bats from Arlington, Texas do the trick? Plus, they've got Cliff Lee on the bump. It's all coming your way. First pitch is next. Next on Fox. Texas Rangers starting lineup. It is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Ron Washington will have his shortstop Elvis Anderson his 10 game hitting streak batting leadoff. Then Michael Young, baseball's leading hitter Josh Hamilton is third. Vladimir Guerrero batting fourth. David Murphy, then Benji Molina, the kid Mitch Moreland, Andres Blanco, and Julio Borbone. Well, this game is brought to you by Budweiser, official beer of the first inning. The beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, clean finish. Budweiser, it's what we do. Brad Bergeson on the mound for the Baltimore Orioles. And we are underway with a called first strike. Bergeson will turn 25 at the end of September, making his 21st start on the season. He's 4-9 and nine and ERA near 6. And the scouting report on Bergeson, man up. It's time for him to grow up in the big leagues. He's a young guy, and he's got to get rid of all the young man jitters. And he's also a guy that, when he gets ahead of you, he really likes his changeup. 
Well, right now he is behind the leadoff hitter, Elvis Andrus, hitting 295 during his 10 game hitting streak and 277 overall. Fouls one away. Andrus, one of the Rangers that made the all star team this year. At the ripe old age of 21. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. Ron Washington now in his fourth season as the Rangers skipper. Took over for the man in the other dugout, Buck Showalter. And right now, I don't know about you, Chris, but wouldn't be too difficult to give him uh, the manager of the year. Manager of the year award, or at least be out front right now Certainly. in the race. Yeah, he is definitely in consideration. A big swing and a miss, and Ferguson. Has his first strikeout of the day. Let's take a look at the Orioles' defense. It's P.A. Jones, the Gold Glove winner in center. Then Marcakis in right. Third to first, Bell, Lugo, Roberts, and Wigington. Craig Tatum getting a rare start behind the dish. And the 24-year-old Ferguson out on the mound. Getting ready to face the Rangers' all-time hits leader in Michael Young. Missed a few games earlier this week with a stiff neck. Just very quietly put together a stellar career. And had another hit up on the resume for Michael Young. Well, this is the definition of Chuck and Duck, Chris. Fastball up and out over. Bang. Right back up the box. Well, that's just beautiful hitting right there. And he kind of spoils your rotten, does Michael Young. He just consistently goes out there, keeps his mouth shut, and plays great baseball. Now, here is the mark of consistency in 2010. Baseball's leading hitter, Josh Hamilton. And he immediately hits a one-hopper to Julio Lugo, who turns the 6-4-3 double play. And just like that, Ferguson is out of the inning quickly. We'll see Cliff Lee take the mound. And now, here's the Orioles starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. This one's hitting second baseman Brian Roberts will lead off, followed by Julio Lugo, Nick Markakis, Ty Wigington, the O's all-star hitting fourth. Then it's the DH Luke Scott, Adam Jones, Felix P.A., Craig Tatum, and the youngster Josh Bell batting ninth. Well, Cliff Lee has been everything and then some for the Rangers since they picked him up in a July 9th trade from the Seattle Mariners. Well, you run out of superlatives when you start describing this left-hander, one of the best in the game, no question. The scouting report, a lot of times when you face a guy like this, you'll look at the, you'll look at the, the scouting report and it'll just say, good luck. That's, that, that's what he, and be, they say good luck because he's the complete package. He has no weaknesses, and notice the italics around complete. That's because once he takes the mound, he expects himself to go nine. He's an old throwback. 
He has done that seven times to lead everybody in the American League. And in steps Brian Roberts to lead it off for the Orioles. Roberts looks at what else but a called strike. No surprise there, is it? 71% of first pitch strikes for Cliff Lee. That leads all of baseball. The league average is 59%. I mean, that's an alarming rate if you're a hitter, isn't it? It's discouraging if you're a hitter because, first of all, he's throwing so many first pitch strikes, but not only, man, they're not in the middle of the plate, Chris. These are quality strikes around the knees on the outside corner. Well, he has actually fallen behind Roberts, 2-1. and one. Roberts started the year with the Orioles, then in early April, bothered by a bad back, missed 91 games with a herniated disc. And since he has returned to the top of the lineup, He's infused a jolt of energy. The 2-1. Ball popped up behind the plate toward first base. Mitch Moreland's going to give it a look. And he's going to squeeze it in front of Benji Molina for out number one. Take a look at the Rangers' defense. Few injuries. So they have an outfield of Hamilton, Bourbon, and Murphy left to right. Young, the former Gold Glove shortstop, now over at third to make way for Elvis Andrus. Andres Blanco at second and Mitch Moreland at first. And it'll be the two-time Gold Glover, Benji Molina, behind the plate working with Cliff Lee. Julio Lugo hitting just 257 this year. Fouls one away. And because Cliff Lee throws so many first-pitch strikes... You have to come out aggressive on him. He's not. He, he's going to be around the plate. But what happens then, because his, his stuff is so good, you're making a lot of quick outs. You're keeping his pitch count down, hence the complete games. Lee, 10 and 6 overall. Fourth best ERA in the AL at 277. And he jumps out ahead 0 and 2. Which is no surprise as well, is it? No. He's jumped out to an 0-2 count on 34% of the hitters he's faced. More than one out of every three is an 0-2. <laughs> That's why he's good, folks. He's real good. The 0-2 pitch, low and inside. Lee was dealt by Seattle on July 9th for first baseman Justin Smoke and three minor leaguers. Smoke has since then been demoted, but they feel like he's a power hitter for the future up there in the Emerald City. Quickly wanted that outside fastball. Mark Carlson, the home plate umpire, not in the giving mood. Well, that's been somewhat of the theme the first two games here in Baltimore. Man in the on-deck circle, Nick Markakis, in fact, had some issues with Jeff Nelson behind the plate last night. Elvis Andrews, a nice play there, and he just gets Lugo by a half step. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, here's our sprint player first for the Baltimore Orioles, Nick Markakis. Last night, with Jeff Nelson working behind the plate, they called third strike, and Markakis didn't like it. And neither did Nelson, who tossed Markakis for his first career ejection. Now Markakis, you know that... As a former hitter, I don't think that ball was on the plate. So not only do you get it stuck to you as a, as a hitter, but then you're not allowed to say anything and you get kicked out of the game. So unfortunately, Mark Hakus, the first big league ejection. Ah, how's it feel to get run? Not that bad. Remember who tossed you for the first time? The very first time it was a... An umpire, uh, he's, he's no longer uh, an umpire, but he was a very good umpire. Jim Quick was his name. And, and a, a great last name for an umpire, too. Yeah, he had a quick hook. He got me from <laughs> second base, too. When you were up at the plate? Uh, no, I was in the dugout. Well, even yeah, further away. I was in the dugout yapping at the home plate umpire because I was, I was known to yap once in a while. He wanted to just hit the mute button. And... I guess Jim Quick just decided that's enough. I don't care what he's saying. Get out of here, Grace. Well, in the meantime, Markakis has worked it to a 2-2 count. Markakis, one of the few Orioles with some degree of success against Cliff Lee. Four for eight lifetime. One of it just left the yard.
The 2-2 fouled away. Well, Marquecas did a great job just to stay alive there. Well, you saw Marquecas getting tossed last night. He wasn't the only Oro nope. before he was he? No. Nope. Buck Showalter got his first ejection as a skipper of the Orioles. That came on later in the evening. And there's a called third strike, and Marquecas doesn't have much to say to Mark Carlson. They don't want to get run again, but that pitch looked like it was off the plate as well. The Now Network by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. And by Fusion, the 2010 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Get it and drive one. The Inner Harbor area in beautiful Baltimore, Maryland. Just gorgeous, isn't it? Have to be out on one of those boats. It's a little Have steamy here. Huh? Yeah. What do you say you and I just go over there? I don't know. Boat. Listen, that's a lot of dead weight you'd be carrying, my friend. <laughs> Cliff Lee, a 1-2-3 first. And now he'll watch his offense go to work with the nine-time All-Star Vladimir Guerrero. He looks at a ball from Brad Bergeson. Vlad checking in at 299, 21 homers, 87 RBIs. Rips one to right. It is fading. Marcakis giving chase and runs out of room. Ron Washington told us before the game he understands that Vlad's power numbers are down right now. He's homerless in August, but he says he's getting those singles that go whoop. What does that mean? Well, that means they're getting through the infield quickly. He's starting to get a little more off the bat. In other words, you know, a young Vladimir Guerrero used to hit balls that were line drives that just all of a sudden something would kick it in the fanny late and it would go out of the ballpark. Well, there's a one-hopper to Lugo, who gloves it, throws, and gets him. Well, here's our sprint player first for the Texas Rangers, Josh Hamilton, who hit into the 6-4-3 double play to end the first. Is the league's leading hitter. He came in hitting 354. He's tops in hits, tops in total bases, and he could be the second Ranger to ever win a batting crown, joining Julio Franco. Julio Franco. Who did it back in 1991. Talk about five tools. That was made for that guy right there, Josh Hamilton. Yeah, that, that term gets thrown around a lot, and I think it gets thrown around too much. A lot of guys are labeled five tool that, well, maybe have three. That guy has all five of them. And they're sharp tools in the shed as well. Do you know what the five tools are? I do. Go ahead and tell us. It's speed. It's hitting for average. Mm -hmm. It's hitting for power. Mm -hmm. It's chasing down balls, meaning... You, you, you can do it in the outfield. Just like David Murphy hit one. Nick Marcakis is playing it off the corner and will hold Murphy to a single. Wow. And then throwing the ball as well. 
Here are our Ford keys to the game, Mr. Grace. Well, I'd love to tell you about them, Chris. The game is on the field. For the Rangers, on paper, you've got Cliff Lee. You're in first place. The Orioles in last place. The game on paper looks like this is a sure win for Texas. However, the game's on the field. Baltimore, the lefties have to show up. And that is Cliff Lee doesn't face too many left-handed hitters. But you've got Marcakis, You've got Luke Scott. And you've also got... Felix P.A. in the lineup. So those lefties are going to have to do damage against Lee for them to have a chance. Well, a guy that hasn't done much damage since he came over in a July 1st trade from the San Francisco Giants looks at a called first strike. That is Benji Molina. Catching is the one position that the Rangers haven't been able to figure out the last few years. They had Jared Saltalamacchia and Taylor Teagarden and Matt Trainer, and none of those guys really took it by the ropes. So they brought in the veteran Molina. And he gets a hold of one to the left. P.A. drifts back and has it for the second out. Didn't you think it was interesting that Murphy hits a ball, a bullet off the wall, but yet stops at first base because Marcakis has a reputation, and he has the numbers to prove it, that he has one of the best right field arms in all of baseball. In fact, he led the American League in 2008 and 2009 in assists. You don't want to run on that guy too often unless you have one of those five tools in your back pocket. I didn't have that speed tool. <laughs> well, up steps Mitch Moreland, who's on a bit of a hot streak. Home runs in consecutive games for him. Promoted at the end of July when Ian Kinsler went on the DL. And there goes Murphy. Tatum's throw is not in time. Murphy now 10 of 11 in stolen bases this season. Well, when you can steal second, you can stop it first on a ball at the wall. The high throw from Craig Tatum, just high enough to let Murphy get in underneath the tag. Close play. But now a runner in scoring position for the Rangers. Ron Washington pressing the accelerator there. Got a great jump on Bergeson. Now in scoring position for the rookie Moreland. Originally a 17th round draft pick in 2007. He has hit safely in 10 of his 15 big league games. And he looks at a called strike. Well, that's a pretty 2-0 pitch there from Bergeson right at the kneecaps on 2-0. That just freezes a hitter. Doing very well so far with runners in scoring position. And now he's ahead 3-1. and one. Laid off the change up there. Now he's got himself a good hitter's count. The 3-1 from Bergeson. And it is ball four. So two on with two out for Andres Blanco. Blanco continues to start at second base while Ian Kinsler mends. He's been on the DL since July 29th with a sore groin. He's going for another MRI on Monday, and they think he can resume baseball activities soon after that. And unfortunately for Ian Kinsler, he's been on the mend pretty much all year long in 2010. It's been a tough year physically for him. ball outside. This lineup takes on a different dynamic when Kinsler and eventually when Nelson Cruz Nelson gets Cruz. back in it as well, right? Yeah, Nelson Cruz is such an underrated player. He's you know, an all-star and he, but he's a guy that just really, you can you can put him behind Vladimir Guerrero and Guerrero is going to get some strikes. There's a ball hit sharply, but Roberts gloves it. So the Rangers threaten, but don't score. We are off to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing.
and a crisp, clean finish. It's what we do. And what we are doing is sweating. 91 degrees with a thousand percent humidity. But that's what you expect at the end of August in Baltimore, right? And the, and the forecast, we saw it this morning. <laughs> I like TV, that guy's. The forecast is swampy. I like that guy's fan right there, Grace. He's got an idea. He's got. He's a bird fan. Uh huh. I like that. Orioles fan. We're putting it together here. Lee to face Wigginton, Scott, and Jones. And Lee falls behind. Wigginton, the lone Orioles All-Star representative out in Anaheim this past summer. Hitting 252, 18 homers, 61 RBIs, and a big swing and a miss. He's just a solid player. Wherever you put him, you're going to get 100% of his heart and his soul. He's going to give you some pretty decent numbers as well, Chris. Wigginton, a free agent after this year. He reportedly passed through waivers along with Luke Scott. Now, once again, that's something that the teams like to keep confidential. Right. Well, so much for that now, huh? Well, that's a report out there. I didn't break <laughs> the news here. I'm just reporting what somebody else reported and that they were both pulled back, so these guys will not be dealt before the end of the waiver trade deadline, which is coming up shortly. Wigginton, there's one to block and there's one down. Buck Showalter accepted the Orioles' job on July 29th, took it over full-time at the beginning of August. The team has gone 11-7. and Two-time manager of the year, 94 with the Yankees, 2004 with the Rangers. We could have easily had a couple more with the Arizona Diamondbacks. I think a very good hire by Andy McPhail. I think this guy is going to do some good things here. He's a no-nonsense guy. I've never met a more prepared manager than Buck Showalter. Luke Scott, first pitch swinging, sends one down the left field line. Michael Young gives chase, but it's foul. He almost seems like the perfect fit for a franchise which has not had a winning season since 1997. Exactly. And right now, he's still getting to know his new ball club. But I think already he has the respect of his players. And that's, that's, that's what needs to come first. That's the first thing that has to happen is you got to all get on the same ship. And you can't have one guy pulling one way, one guy pulling the other way. And I think Buck, Buck is starting to get these guys to believe in themselves as that one's tapped to Cliff Lee. I'll take it myself, thank you. And there are two outs. Now Cliff Lee's Rangers debut actually came against these same Orioles back on July 10th. His first pitch as a Ranger. What happened? It was lined to right, and then Miguel Tejada, the former Oriole, drove one in. Then Marquecas went deep, his tourists as well. Adam Jones left the yard. Lee was tagged for six runs, including three homers in the 6-1 loss. But he did, of course, go the distance. <laughs> you don't see many complete games giving up six runs, but you don't see Cliff Lee's very often either. Good fastball right by Adam Jones. Well, Jones's home run that night against Cliff Lee traveled 418 feet. That's a big ball. He fouls one away, and quickly he is behind 0-2. And Jones is one of these guys that Buck Showalter, he says, basically, I'm looking for pieces to the puzzle right now. They think they've got one in Jones. He's going to have to be an awfully big piece. Well, I think they've got, they've certainly got a big piece of the puzzle here. He's just a very talented young man. Still learning the, the game at this level, but when you've got the speed, and, and, and he is a very good defensive center fielder, and that's an that's an important piece in, a, in and of itself. Then you add his offense. This guy's going to, he, he's an all star caliber player year in and year out. Made the all star team last year. Just turned 25 on August 1st. And he is headed back out to the field after Cliff Lee rings him up for his second strikeout in as many innings. We will return to Camden Yards right after this word from your local Fox station.
Network. Right now at Camden Yards, we have a scoreless game, just a pair of singles by the Rangers. That's all that's up on the board right now. Oh, yeah, Gracie, you got to go with that look right there. I, I think that's next week, you and I, I think we're going with the Elvis look on this. No, that's Bowser from Sha Na Na, isn't it? With a little flip that's do in the front. Point. He's just not flexing. Sounds the white t shirt and leather jacket. Borbone, Andres, and Young to start it off against Brad Ferguson. Borbone looks at a called strike, hitting 265, three homers, 27 RBIs. And it's one and one. Ferguson, you said early on he needs to man up. And Buck Showalter told us that when he first got here, Ferguson, basically every pitch was looking into the dugout, right? Looking into the dugout, like, is that okay? Was that okay? Or was that bad? Or when you get in the middle part of the game, the fifth, sixth inning, and you get a couple of guys on base, all of a sudden looking into the dugout, that one's... I guess it was not fouled off. Nope. Or Bowen thought it was fouled off, and it was not. Running. So it is a strikeout for Bergeson. His second of the game. Good breaking ball there. Oh, yeah, that one was not foul tipped. Anytime, you young players, anytime it's strike three, I mean, head to first base. Don't be the umpire. Let the umpire be the umpire. He may have been able to beat that throw had he run. Especially with his speed. Exactly. I'm sure Ron Washington will have something to say about that to his young center fielder. Ron Washington not bashful about talking to his young guys, including the guy at the dish, Elvis Andrus. Yeah, he's wanting him to be a complete shortstop. Ball up the middle. Lugo gloves it to his left, throws, and gets it. Good play by the veteran, Julio Lugo. Well, next week, Fox Saturday Baseball. It'll be the Philadelphia Phillies heading out west to take on those first place Padres. Mark Grace and I will be up in Seattle to see the AL Central leading Twins. It's coming your way next Saturday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on Fox. Michael Young fouls one away. And how about those Padres, Mark Grace? A five-game lead over the Giants in the NL West. What a pitching staff. What a young pitching staff. Bud Black has assembled out in San Diego. 73 wins already. They're amazing to watch. If you haven't had a chance to see Matt Latos yet, watch him. Yeah, he's a guy that the Chargers might look at as a backup tight end to Antonio <laughs> he's a, Gates. He's a monster. He's a huge man <laughs> with huge stuff. Michael Young got the first hit of the ball game. Was wiped out on a double play. Ball hit sharply right at Lugo. And it's the second 1 2 3 inning for Ferguson. Cliff Lee will sprint back out to the mound to take it for the Rangers.
so far, and this is the Cliff Lee we expected to see, Mark Grace. That's exactly right. They're just making it look easy, and, and all you young pitchers out there, a lesson learned is if you get ahead of hitters, boy, it makes pitching a heck of a lot easier, and no surprise, 0-1. He has done that now to Felix Pia. Hitting 284 this season, but in his last 20 games, he's hitting 324, so he's starting to figure it out. And it's a called strike, too. A little cut fastball there, started on the inside corner and just came right to the middle of the plate. The 0-2 delivery. Ball hit on one hop past Blanco for the Orioles' first hit of the day. Well, it's a nice 0-2 hitting right there by P.A. Pretty good pitch, or it looked to be a pretty good pitch, down and away. And he just goes down and smokes it right back up the box. That's not a bad pitch at all. That's right where Benji Molina wanted it. Sometimes good hitters hit good pitches, and that's the case there. So with a man on and nobody out, the backup catcher Craig Tatum getting the start for Matt Wieters, hitting 264. The eight and nine hitters have combined for no homers and nine RBIs. Tatum fouls one away. There you have it. Seven out of eight have been 0 and 1. PA with a short lead over at first. Swing and a miss by Tatum. Cliff Lee did not walk his 10th batter until earlier this week in his last start against the Rays. Truly amazing. He struck out 143 batters before his 10th walk. That is the most ever to start a season before giving up walk number 10. Well, we were talking about 0-2 counts. This is the sixth 0-2 count this afternoon. He's only faced eight batters. <laughs> so he's way ahead of his own leading percentage. But what is it that separates him from other pitchers? I mean, you always hear, okay, throw strikes, throw strikes. Is it that guys are afraid to, that they can't put the ball exactly where they want to? That's exactly right. It's having the guts to throw strikes. A lot of pitchers, well, they... They fear the lumber. You know, a lot of times they throw it over the plate, it gets hit in the gap, and all of a sudden now they want to nitpick and nibble. Cliff Lee, he's just got the guts to throw it over the plate, and he's got the ability to throw quality strikes. He, he rarely throws a ball in the middle of the plate. He keeps it down around the knees, or he can also elevate around the letters and get strikes upstairs. Look at this. Walks per nine innings. It's not even close. That's insane. I mean, Carl Pavano is about six miles back on that board. And there is a called strike three. That is just nasty. What are you going to do with that? Well, for the past five weeks, fans have voted to select whom among the 15 big league clubs should receive a $200,000 Pepsi Refresh grant to make a difference in their community as part of the Pepsi Refresh project. Nearly 2 million votes were cast, and we'd like to congratulate the Minnesota Twins and their efforts to support the Courage Center's Rolling Twins Youth Softball Wheelchair Team. Visit MLB.com slash Pepsi Refresh for more information. So great work being done up there in the Twin Cities. Man on, man out for Josh Bell. Young third baseman hitting just 216. A big man with big power. Hadn't shown it yet at the major league level. But if he gets those big arms extended, boy, he can hit it an awfully long ways. And there's one that is smacked. Borbone is going back, back, and it's gone. Well, we said a very big man with very big power, and he got those big arms extended. He got something in the middle of the plate. And that is a long, long ways to center field here at Camden Yards. So congratulations 
The first big league homer in the career of Josh Bell. Man who came over from the Los Angeles Dodgers in the trade that sent lefty reliever George Sherrill West. Now he's probably going down to call the family. Let him know. Oh, well, trust me. He'll have plenty of messages on his <laughs> cell phone after today's game. Congratulations, young man. Hopefully the first of hundreds. Did you ever did you get the first home run ball you? Oh yeah. yeah. I've still got it. There's one way high and outside. You don't want to share who it was against or well it was uh, in my second game as a major leaguer. It was uh, against the it was in San Diego against the Padres against a left hander named Keith Comstock. Boy. And he was uh, released the very next day. <laughs> And I'm oh, not trying to boy. be funny. He was released the very next day. He really was. <laughs> wow. So you got to imagine that whoever got that ball is going to send it back to the Orioles. Get a few gifts out there. Sure. Right? And uh, and Cliff Lee won't get released tomorrow. No, I'm, I'm guessing he will make it back on the team flight after tomorrow's game. One hopper to Blanco. There's two down. All right, pick a stat, pick a player, build your baseball hot streak. Correctly pick 10 straight and win a Fox Sports baseball cap. You could join hundreds of others who are already wearing theirs. The current longest streak is at 17, held by three players. You get your streak started today. Win yourself a hat or some cash at foxsports.com slash fantasy. Well, the three guys that are tied for it right now, Johnny Rocket, B. Martin, Sabo 301. So congratulations to them. Somebody get 18 straight, though. You want to, you want to try and always better yourself. Absolutely. Just Aim be high. better. Aim high. Look at this. The negotiations are already That's started. It. Nope. I don't want to give it up. You know what I'd hold out for? A pinch hitting appearance when the roster's expanded. I like that. Right? That's not asking too much. Right. September 1st. I mean, Buck Showalter's in the evaluation process. Okay. This is what we're going to. Nope. I don't want to give it up. Uh, oh, no, no. They got something. Here you go. Oh, you're coming with us. Yep. That away. Swing and a miss by Lugo. He grounded out in this Good first play. change up right there from Cliff Lee. He's going to get a bet as he gets his basket of goodies. Let's look at this beautiful change up way out in front of it is Lugo right to the outside corner. Great pitch. Still got that ball. Tapped away. So that guy's going to go home. Yeah, I caught a home run ball off of who? Josh Bell. Yeah, he's a young guy. Yeah, but look at the loot I got out of this. Look at all the. Exactly. I got a <laughs> bunch of stuff. That's what he's saying. Can you get some dates for three of my friends? <laughs> Andres. That'll do it in the third. But the rookie has a first. Josh Bell, 394 feet. And it's 2 nothing O's.
DirecTV. Watch your favorite team wherever you live, only on DirecTV. And by New Gillette Odor Shield Antiperspirant. Help eliminate odor. Don't just cover it up. First pitch swinging for Josh Hamilton, just like in his first at bat, but a much better result this time around. So the Rangers have the leadoff man on. Recently, we just caught up with O skipper Buck Showalter, and I asked him how much evaluating is he doing during games. Well, that's somewhat some of it. You know, we certainly, uh, I'm not over here, uh, you know, like a school teacher or something. We're trying to win baseball games and trying to. Uh, Establish that part too is what comes first, you know, it's like the chicken or the egg. You know, uh, everything we do should be towards the end game, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want guys to think I'm sitting up here with a scorecard. You know, they're professionals, they have some track record, got a, long, a lot of young guys trying to develop one too, and it's a great time of the year to, uh, to evaluate. But, uh, you know, the focus is on a major league game for nine innings and trying to, to, to do as well as we can. One, one guy you have to be very pleased with is your starter, Brad Bergeson, this afternoon. Well, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, it looks encouraging. Arietta and Madison and, and Bergie are seem to be getting a little stronger as the year goes on, and, and you know that's part of young players. You know, in August and September, a time of year where they really haven't played that much before, is, is being, when you're not, you don't have uh, dry gunpowder and you don't have all your bullets. You know, what am I going to do to give our team a chance to win? And it also makes them realize that stuff they do in the off season to be ready for the long haul is so important. Buck, we appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Keep okay, it up, guys. Skipper. Take care. Well, during that, Brad Bergeson did not live up to the praise of Buck Walter. A single by Guerrero, or a double by Guerrero, knocked in Hamilton. First pitch swinging for Murphy, and that's actually a pretty good play by Craig Tatum. Guerrero moves to third with one down. Let's take a look at the RBI double. Vladimir Guerrero. Ron Washington was talking. That ball starting to come off his bat a little better, Chris. Watch this ball just bounce, and it gets past Marquecas. And with the great speed of Josh Hamilton, he scores easily. And even though Murphy hit the ball about 10 feet, that was a productive out right there. <laughs> it got Vladimir Guerrero to third base. Now, Buck Showalter is going to bring his infield in and try to cut off this run. So it's going to take an outfield fly ball to score Black. Well, that's what Benji Molina did his first time up. He flew it to the track and left. Molina has really struggled as a Texas Ranger, hitting just 220 since coming over six weeks ago from the Giants. The ball popped up to right center. Marquez, remember arm. the great arm. Guerrero's going to challenge him. He hesitates. And somehow beats the throw home. I didn't think he was going to go, Chris. Did you? About 15 feet down that line, it almost looked like he was thinking of stopping. Instead, he ties it at two. There's the catch, and then he's like, uh, well, okay, I'll try it now. It's too late. Tatum can't come up with the throw, and Vladimir Guerrero using those old wheels to score. We talked about Marquecas leading the AL in assists each of the last two years. That one probably not his greatest throw he's ever made. But just like a, just like most first place teams, they fall behind and then immediately answer. Two down now for Mitch Moreland, who walked back in the second. Looks at a called strike. Moreland and Jorge Cantu, the guy they picked up at the trade deadline from the Florida Marlins, have pretty much been splitting the first base duties over the last few weeks. Ooh, good slider there. Ferguson, one of these guys that's going to get an awfully long look from Buck Walter and the rest of the Orioles staff. Originally a fourth-round pick in 2004. Nice play by Ty Wigginton to his right. He'll take it himself. But the Rangers get it done thanks to Vlad Speed. We're tied at two.
tie the game. Lee will face the heart of the Orioles order. Marcakis, Wigginton, and Scott. Called strike against Nick Marcakis, who's had a tough go in his last two at-bats in this series. Yeah, he's had some some tough luck with, with the outside corner. He thinks it's been extended. There's another one. <laughs> They're just going to pound away away, huh? This, this poor guy's like, what do I have to do? Well, at some point, do you have to make some sort of adjustment? Yes, you're going to have to go out there and get it. Absolutely. You have to realize that Mark Carlson, he's, he's given him that outside corner. There's one fouled away. Of course, if Mark Grace was my hitting coach, the scouting report today would have just said good luck. Good luck. So I'd be pretty much on my own. Yeah. Cliff Lee has no weaknesses. He's got great control with his great stuff. And a lot of times that's the scouting report. Good luck. Two hopper over to Young at third. Long throw gets him for out number one. In between innings, we caught up with Texas skipper Ron Washington. And I asked him about Vladimir Guerrero's speed on that tag up. Well, I tell you, uh, you know, I, I think... Uh, the way that uh, Marquez caught that ball flat-footed, it gave him an opportunity to get in there, and he just couldn't get anything on the throw, and it uh, ended up going to the left-hander's batter's box, and we got in there and tied the score. Yeah, just like a, a first-place team, you give up a couple of runs in the in the bottom half of the inning, you bounce right back with a couple of your own. Well, you know, Hamilton set the tone, got the base hit, and then, uh, you know, Vlad starting to swing the bat a little bit, and uh, he hit one up the gap, and uh, Murphy, uh, you know, hit the ground ball down the first base line to get him over there, and right there we executed, and that's the way you like to play the game. What are you seeing today out of Cliff Lee? Well, you know, he's pounding the strike zone. Uh, those guys are very aggressive, and, uh, you know, the one guy you didn't expect to do what he did was Bell. I know he has that potential, but uh, he ended up getting them a run to the deepest part of the ballpark, and he earned it. All right, Wash, we appreciate the time. Thank you. Well, Keep thank it up, you. Skipper. You bet. I know you're going you're gonna to be shocked, Chris, but it's, it's an 0-2 count. Well, it, it, it's not the first one of the day. I mean, you, if you're a batter, you're almost going up there thinking it's 0-2, right, yeah, well at this point. Put the 0-2 and two on the scoreboard and go get them. All tapped away. Wigginton now won for his last 16. This is a much better team if and when Ty Wigginton is probably hitting further down in the order? Well, probably. Not really. You're clean up very often, but don't tell him that. That ball yeah. killed. But perhaps he just put my face on that baseball and smacked it out of the yard. And boy, did that get out of here in a hurry over the 410 sign in left center field. Goodness gracious, Ty Wigginton. I apologize for my partner saying that about you. <laughs> That's my bad. My bad, Ty. Oh. Well, you see Molina wants it out. Where does it go? Right to the middle of the plate. And Wigginton. That's what you do when you get a mistake. Hit it way out of here. Man, that ball has hit a long, long way. I don't think the officer even moves out there. So Luke Scott up. The Orioles have reclaimed the lead. Scott grounded out to Cliff Lee his first time up. Looks at a called strike on the outside corner. Scott, one of three lefties in this lineup. Coming into today, lefties were hitting almost 60 points higher than right-handed hitters against Cliff Lee. Doesn't make much sense, but... Buck Showalter saying, heck with it. I'm going to put three lefties in there. That ball is tattooed to right center. Make it back to back for the Birds. Well, you hang a 
slider. This is what happens. Another mistake. And Luke, oh, a little bat flip for you, too, there, Chris. That is home run number 23 on the year. Way out of here. And the last time these Orioles faced Cliff Lee, they hit three long balls. Well, here in the fourth inning, they've already got three long balls off of Lee. Oh, is that ball killed? And that warranted a quick trip to the mound from pitching coach Mike Maddox. Hasn't had to do that a whole lot since no. Cliff Lee came over from Seattle. Smile big and bright when you do that off a of Cy Young contender. For Scott, his team high 23rd homer, and you saw the list over the last month. Only Dan Ugla and Jose Bautista have more home runs than Luke Scott. And Jones, one of the guys who took lead deep. Back on July 9th is down. Actually, it's a 1 1 count. Ball hit on over to Young. So there will not be back to back to back homers against Cliff Lee. It's the ninth time in Lee's career he's given up three homers in a game. It's happened twice this season and both times against the Orioles, who have actually played very well against the Rangers over all their five and three. They have had this very good Rangers team. They've had had their number. Orioles just playing much better baseball under Buck Showalter. I don't know what kind of wand he's got over there. That he's waving and pulling rabbits out of hats, but the numbers don't lie. They're just a much better team under him. Well, you know, Brian Roberts, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's been with this club for eight years. He's had six managers now. His first one, Mike Hargrove. His last one, Buck Showalter. And the only two that had previous big league experience. So he said, you know, Buck Showalter walks in with a resume. That's right. And he's a name. I imagine that gets everybody's attention. Well, he, and he also has the reputation of being a no-nonsense, terrific manager. He's won everywhere he's been. And it's going to take some time here. Second hit of the day for PA. Well, we talked talked about the lefties. Talked about the lefties in the lineup. Well, this is the second hit for PA. A ball that stays up again. Luke Scott with a home run from the left side. So the lefties certainly have pulled their weight. Well, the lefties are three for six this afternoon. A couple of hits by PA and the home run by that man, Luke Scott. Now two down for Craig Tatum. One of the three strikeout victims for Lee this afternoon. PA draws a throw. Just in case you're thinking about it, the last time Cliff Lee did not work into the seventh inning of a game, his final start of the regular season is a Philadelphia Philly. I'm not Pretty talking about, yeah, I'm not talking about going six and then watching the rest from the bench. I'm talking about starting. There goes PA. Molina's throw is not in time. Fourth stolen base of the year for PA. And a great jump. This one's on Cliff Lee. No chance for Molina. I don't even think a good throw was going to have him. PA with a great jump. Now another runner in scoring position. The aggressive managing of Buck Showalter. Now the 20th pitch of the inning for Lee. Young gloves it, throws across the diamond and will not get him. PA thought about running home but retreats to third. So that'll be an infield single for Craig Tatum and runners at the corners with two down. Well, nice hitting 
first and foremost by Tatum. But then a really good play but there by Young to save a run. And then a good play on the other end by Mitch Moreland coming off the bag and having, and having his head up and keeping P.A. at third base. It's not going to get any easier for Cliff Lee because now Josh Bell steps in. And all he did, his last at bat, was homer into the seats in center field. Bell is first big league homer in his first at bat today. Now with a chance to add on to the lead. That ball is tattooed. Borbone looks at it again and it's gone. First pitch, fastball down the middle. Same pitch he hit to center field. I think this fan in center field might have both home run balls <laughs> from Josh Bell. He might get a big care package. Way out of here it goes again. And these Orioles, after being shut out here last night by C.J. Wilson, boy, have they jumped all over Cliff Lee. Roberts first pitch swinging and Michael Young retires all three Oriole outs, but the damage was done. It got going with Wigington with his 19th, followed by Luke Scott, his 23rd, and Josh Bell a three-run shot, and it's 7-2 O's. The Orioles are up for five in the fourth and now have a 7-2 lead as we start off the fifth. Blanco, Borbone, Andres for the Rangers. As the Orioles have shelled Texas ace Cliff Lee. And it's a 1-1 count. Josh Bell. With a two-run homer in the third, a three-run shot in the fourth. His first two homers of his career. And 
both hit a long, long ways to center field. Is that what you call staying on a baseball? <laughs> and then some. That's called not being intimidated by one of the best pitchers in the game. And that can be said for this entire Orioles lineup. Well, Blanco ahead in the count three and one. It's now three and two. Taken all the way on the three one count. At this stage of the game now, if you're the Rangers, you're playing catch up. You need base runners, not just base hits, but base runners, and that includes bases on balls, hit by pitch, whatever it takes. Well, there you go, and it's time right now for a direct TV game break, and this one from Target Field where Peter Borges leaves the yard for the first time in his career. I got you, Josh Bell. But the Halos weren't done. Bobby Abreu, his 15th of the year. He's been great from that leadoff spot. And the Angels with a 4-3 lead over the Twins in the third. Remember, you can see every big league game in HD. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Right now, Bergeson, or Bergeson is uh, probably driving his manager nuts because the team goes out and puts five on the board in the bottom of the fourth, and you go out... And you walk the leadoff man, you fall behind the next hitter. Not only walk, them, but walk the number eight hitter. Now you fall behind the number nine hitter. You don't want to turn this good Texas lineup over if you can help it. There's a strike. Ferguson has actually pitched very well in the month of August. 1 0 and ERA a smidge over two. Low and outside. Started the year with the big league club, was sent down on April 20th, recalled in early May, sent down again. So he's got that yo-yo thing mm -hmm. working, which I'm sure does wonders for your confidence as a young player. But he's one of these guys that's getting a chance. We saw Jake Arrieta pitch a great ball game last night. He was just one up by C.J. Wilson, who finished one out shy of a complete game shutout. Brian Mattis, a guy you saw pitch last week down in Tampa. They love his upside. Threw a beautiful game here a couple of nights ago. Jeremy Guthrie's a guy that they feel like they can count on in the rotation. So young guys are getting opportunities, and there's a swing and a miss for Borbone, who is a strikeout victim for the second time. Boy, what a pitch there from Bergeson. Whatever Craig Tandem came out and told him, he told him to throw one of the best sliders you'll see right on the back foot of Borbone. So bouncing back nicely there is the young right-hander. Top of the order, Elvis Andrus, strikeout to start the game and a ground out. Looks at one low. Ferguson born and lives out in California. Fouled away. So we were talking about Elvis Andrus a little bit earlier and about... Ron Washington pulling him into the clubhouse to make sure he's got his head screwed on straight right. at certain times and in the early part of his career. Early part of his career, he said he wasn't making the plays late in the ball game. And this is when the Rangers had Omar Vizquel, 11 gold gloves worth of Omar, Omar Vizquel in the ball club. And he basically told his young shortstop, if you really want to be a seven-inning shortstop, we can do that because I've got Omar Vizquel, and I will gladly put him out there in the eighth and ninth inning if you don't start catching the baseball when it really counts. Well, and sure enough, that message was received loud and clear by Andrews, and now he is a complete nine-inning shortstop, and he's going to start winning gold gloves soon. Looks at one outside. Yeah, seven inning shortstops don't normally make it to all star games like this kid right. did this year. Has a 10 game hitting streak.
the 2-2 from Bergeson. Ball hit up the middle, past a diving Robertson into center field. So the Rangers making some noise here in the fifth. Two on, one out for their all-time hits leader, Michael Young. And now the heart of the order going to get their opportunities. Against Bergeson, you've got Young, Hamilton, and Vladimir Guerrero to deal with. Well, called strike. Good pitch there. Well, tune in to the MLB Network for the 2010 Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities World Series presented by KPMG. Check your local listings tomorrow afternoon to watch the girls' softball game on MLB Network. And quickly, Bergeson is ahead 0-2. Beautiful slider, beautiful fastball, 0-2. Ball tapped. Bergeson's going to try and watch it go foul, and it does not. <laughs> well, when you're a great hitter, these balls stay fair. If you're hitting 230, this one's going foul. Michael Young just surviving, and sure enough, that's really the right play by Bergeson. He wasn't going to get him at first base, and that's kind of a helpless feeling having to pick it up fair. And now Josh Hamilton with the bases loaded. Well, Michael Young, as you can see, first in hits, first in, in triples, second in doubles, fourth in RBIs. He has done it all, just like this man, Josh Hamilton, who for the third time in his many at-bats swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. I think Josh has just decided, I'm not going to take any pitches here today. Well, Hamilton, a three-time All-Star, leads all of baseball in batting average. He's hitting 401 against right-handed pitching. That's the best in the bigs, but he's only one for ten with the bases loaded this year. And this one is tapped to Roberts. The Rangers will get a run, but the Orioles will take the out. So it's now seven to three. We don't really see many swings like this from Hamilton. That ball not even near the strike zone. It's an RBI ground out, but I'm sure Josh was hoping for a little bit more out of himself in that situation. Well, two down now for Vladimir Guerrero, who got the Rangers on the board last inning, lacing a double to right center. So if you're Craig Tatum, you just trot it out to the mound, try and settle down his young right-hander. With this guy's strike zone, what in the world could he be telling him? Don't put it there. Jones on his way in. And that'll do it. The Rangers, they get one on the board, but they still trail it by four after five.
Football is presented by Sprint, the Now Network. Right now, the Baltimore Orioles are laying it on Cliff Lee and the Rangers. It is seven to three, courtesy of four home runs and two by their rookie Josh Bell. Lee is still in the ball game. A look at Lugo, Marcakis, and Wigington. There's a called strike. So far, Lugo has played Pepper with the shortstop. A pair of ground outs to Elvis Andres. And what a beautiful curve ball there by Cliff Lee. Haven't seen too many curves today, have we, Chris? No, not at all. That's a nice one to have in your hip pocket. It's been a tough go for Cliff Lee in his two starts against the Orioles as a Texas Ranger. He's gotten hit hard. That ball tap foul. Well, if you look down the road, and I know we still have six weeks left to go in this season, but the Rangers do have a seven-game lead over the second-place Oakland A's. If the Rangers get to October and you've got a guy like Cliff Lee who was 4-0 in the playoffs last year with Philadelphia, I mean, you match up with whether it's with the Yankees or the Rays or the Twins or anybody else. Or anybody else that might make a run. You're right. And to be fair, in years past, when the Rangers made it to the playoffs, and you're talking 96, 98, 99, they had the likes of they did it with Rick Helling and, you know, John Burkett. Yeah, they did it with offense. But let's not forget another left-hander as that one's skied to center field. But Bourbon is actually going to stay in the yard to get that. There's one down. Also, the other left-hander, if you will, C.J. Wilson, having a terrific year as well. You can go Cliff Lee and C.J. Wilson. That's that's going toe to toe with anybody. Well, that's a little disturbing. In his last three starts, 18 innings, and he's given up 17 earned runs. In the meantime, that guy, C.J. Wilson, has been picture perfect, five and zero since the break. Last night, a career high 12 strikeouts as Lee delivers a first pitch strike to Nick Markakis. But they feel like, rotation-wise, that they're going to match up very well if they do get to the playoffs. There's a well, Mark two Hayes strikes. Mark Hayes has got to, got to feel like he's on a lonely island. Every pitch is just perfect on the outside corner. There's nothing you can do with these fabulous pitches. He's, he's sick. Laced foul. Orioles scored two in the third on a Josh Bell two-run shot, his first of his career. Then five in the fourth, thanks to three homers. Marquez is going to have a chance to beat this out. Young's just going to eat it. Well, with two strikes, Michael Young has to play deep. And because of that, he's got a long way to go to try to get the grounder. And then... Smartly decides to just stick it in his pocket. Don't risk a bad throw and an extra base. Keep the double play in order. Well, here comes the guy that got all the trouble started last inning against Cliff Lee. Ty Wigginton. When somebody up here questioned why he was hitting so high in the order, he then turned <laughs> on the next pitch and rocketed it. <laughs> Let's take a look. This got out of here quick. It's like a solid forearm, isn't it? I wouldn't know what a solid say, forearm feels like. Supposedly. I know what a shank one feels yeah, like. Yeah. Nineteenth homer of the year for Wigginton. It's a one low. Cliff Lee will be a free agent after this season and the most sought after player in all of baseball. The Rangers under new ownership. Chuck Greenberg, Nolan Ryan, president. Big swing and a miss there. They just won the bidding rights in an auction 
something we have never seen before at the major league level. Outfitting a Mark Cuban. Yeah, Mark Cuban, the Mavericks owner. So now this organization financially has things straight. Ball in the dirt. And the Rangers have said priority number one is try and entice Cliff Lee to stay. And there's been people talking about, well, does he want to pitch in that heat that you have to deal with down in Texas? And maybe they're looking for reasons as to why he wouldn't want to stay and maybe go elsewhere. But you've got an offense like this and ownership like that. Perhaps that's a very, very good combination. Strike two there. Much to the chagrin of Ty Wigginton. But, you know, talking about the Texas heat, Chris, isn't it hot everywhere in the summertime? I know it's real hot here. I was going to say, you could barbecue on my forehead right now. I mean, you wouldn't want it. I mean, the East Coast is hot. The Midwest is right. stifling hot. I live in Arizona. Enough said. The 3-2. Ball lifted to center. Bourbon in a few steps. And there's two down. Well, that'll bring Luke Scott up to the dish, and all he did the last time was turn on a hanger and belt it. A bomb. 442 feet. Slap him up. Yeah, he liked that one. I don't have those slick moves you like that. You and Sammy didn't do that? No, no. Sammy would blow the kisses right? and all that. I just, anytime I hit a home run, I just I didn't have a handshake. I just shook somebody's <laughs> hand, and Matt Williams would be there. Yeah, nice going. I didn't hit many home, but, you know, I, that's one of my regrets in baseball. I didn't have a fancy handshake like that. You did get to play tic-tac-toe with Larry Walker. That's true. Scott Feldman up in the bullpen, the Rangers' opening day starter. Moved a few weeks ago to relief duty. There's a strike on the outside corner. Cliff Lee does not waver from his game plan. He's correctly stubborn, if you ask me. It's a great game plan, and that is down and away to everybody. But he can get it there. He's certainly struggled today. But we've seen him make some awfully good pitches as well. Now to the inside corner, didn't get the call. Luke Scott, a guy who came over after the 2007 season from the Houston Astros in a deal that sent Miguel Tejada down to Houston. Tejada came back, rejoined the Orioles this year, and right before the deadline was shipped out to San Diego, and he has been a breath of fresh air for Bud Black, a guy that he can lean on and now playing some very good baseball for the first-place Padres. Yeah, everybody was talking about the Padres. They're going to have to trade Adrian Gonzalez. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, they traded all right, but they traded to help Adrian right. Gonzalez going and getting Miguel Tejada and Ryan Ludwig from the St. Louis Cardinals. So the, the Padres added a couple of big bats to go along with that great pitching staff. And Tejada has been shifted back to his natural position of shortstop. That's right. He played third base this year in Baltimore. But because of a few injuries out there in San Diego, sent him back to the shortstop, and he's actually played very he's well. Flourishing. exactly. 2-2 delivery by Lee. And it's a base hit for Scott. Boy, was that pretty by Luke Scott. My goodness. A really good pitcher's pitch. And a great job of just going right with it. Just flipping it out to left field. That's all you can do with that. If you try to pull this ball, you're done. Well, that was like Tony Gwynn right there. Five and a half hole? That's the five and a half hole, exactly. Right between third and short. I mean, Luke Scott, a home run hitter. And he'll probably remind a lot of Oriole fans of some great left-handed hitters here, like remember Ken Singleton. Yeah, he was a switch hitter, I believe, right? That's true. Yeah, they had, I forgot about uh, well, Eddie Murray hit a lot of home runs left-handed, even though he was a switch hitter. 
And while Mike Maddox does a little visit with Cliff Lee out on the mound, let's give you a direct TV game break from the north side of Chicago. Aramis Ramirez turning on one. Fukudome is going to score. And then it's Derek Lee getting struck out by his old teammate, Tom Corzolani. He is 0 for 2 today, 0 for 6 as a Brave, and it's 5 nothing Cubbies. Remember, the only way to watch every game in HD, it's 1-800-DIRECT-TV. So two on, two out for the man who was an all-star last year for these Orioles, Adam Jones. Strikeout and a ground out so far. And Lee looking to do his best to keep it just a four-run deficit. Starts him off with a breaking ball. A little high. Two outs into the 15th, fifth inning, already nine hits for the Orioles off of Cliff Lee. We'll tying outside. A couple of pitches missing up now, which is rare for Cliff Lee. And this is pitch number 90, and I'm starting to wonder if he may be starting to get a little weary out there in this heat, Chris. Pitch number 90, if it's not the eighth inning. Exactly. Oh, a good rip by Jones. He got his pitch. He got the pitch he wanted in the spot he wanted. Took the swing he wanted and fouled it back. And that's a bad feeling as a hitter. I mean, right down Broadway, belt high, and you foul it back. Those are the ones you make your living off right there, Chris. Jones in a bit of a slide. 0 for his last 15 with four strikeouts in that span. That ball is lifted behind first base. Moreland going to squeeze it, and that's going to do it. The Orioles with a couple of hits, but they leave runners on. We're off to the sixth. It's 7-3 to three Baltimore. Lowe's Let's Build Something Together by Pepsi Max. Zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. And by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain limited warranty. Getting a look at the USS Constellation in Baltimore, Maryland. And has Cliff Lee's ship sailed? Quite possible. Tagged for seven runs, including four homers. 
Brad Ferguson working with a four-run lead here in the sixth. He deals with Murphy, Molina, and Moreland. That's a called strike. Brad Bergeson, he struggled this year, 4-9 and nine coming into today with an ERA of 5.80. But last year, in 19 starts, he made a name for himself, going 7-5, and five, an ERA of under 3.5. And, and, you know, they're going to need, we talked about finding pieces to the puzzle. Right. This is a guy that's going to have to jump up if these guys are going to get back into contention in the AL East. And it starts with self-confidence, believing in yourself, especially at this level. Nobody feels sorry for you up here. You don't believe in yourself. Who's going to believe in you? Well, Mark, how tough is that? I mean, you played for years with an organization that use whatever descriptive word you want. Oh, struggling, yeah, futile. Haven't won a World Series since right the year right. 06. So it has been uh, it's been brutal. Felix P.A. gives chase, but it goes foul. Ooh, let's hope he's okay. Hasn't we'll it been 08, by the way? What's that? 1908. 1908, 06. What's the difference? Well, I just want to make sure because, you know, don't make it any worse for those well, Cubs fans yeah. than it needs to be. And the old saying is anybody could have a bad century. <laughs> and they couldn't, you know, 13 years of it was with me there, so they couldn't have done it without me. Now, you guys did make it to the playoffs when you were there. Twice. Yep. Murphy lines one to left. P.A., bad hand and all, will squeeze it for out number one. Take a look at our Verizon game summary, and Cliff Lee with a tough, tough start. For the first time in his career, he allowed four homers in a single game. Two of those to Josh Bell, who leaves the yard for the first time in his career. And we're still trying to find out what that kid who caught his first Major League home run out there in right center got Ooh, as a goodie basket. I kind of want to know what's in that... Care package. Ball inside to Benji Molina. 0 for 1 with a sack fly that drove in a hard charging Vladimir Guerrero. Molina lifts another one to right. Marcakis. And there's two down. Well, Ferguson right back on the horse. He'd given up three runs the last. Two innings, but two quick outs here to start the sixth inning. And that's what Buck is wanting to see. He's wanting to see just what kind of guts and what kind of heart these guys have got. You know, this is a team that's lost a lot of games this year. But, you know what, I've gotten nicked around a little bit. I gave up a couple in the fourth inning. I gave up one in the fifth. But can you get right back on the mound? All right, let's go. And sure enough, he's throwing quality strikes and getting quick outs. Moreland a walk and a ground out, and he looks at strike one. Moreland promoted from the minors on July 29th. Taps one foul. Put up some great numbers a year ago between high A ball and double A, hitting 331 with 85 RBIs. So all they need is a, another run producer in this lineup. I think he's a big reason why Justin Smoke went in the Cliff Lee deal. There's a ball ripped up the middle in front of Jones for a two-out single. Oh, what a rocket that was right back up the middle. It's easy to see why the Rangers like this guy. A mistake out over the plate. Bang. Short, quick swing right there. And just look at the head stay right on it. That's when everything happens just perfectly. When you hit a rocket right back up the middle for a base hit, you've taken a round bat and a round ball, and you've hit it square. <laughs> Andres Blanco up with two down. And that ball laced to Marquecas, and that'll do it. So Ferguson has made it through five and a half with a four-run lead.
He knows there's a lot of baseball left to be played. He's playing a first place team. But he's got to be proud of his guys so far this afternoon off of Cliff Lee. Steve Reich won. Felix B.A. Cliff Lee still out there dealing. P.A. with a couple of knocks today. A couple runs scored. Hitting over 330 now in his last 21 games. And the bottom of the order has been top notch this afternoon. Five for six. That one fisted. And there's one down. Going to bring up Craig Tatum. Struck out in the third. Singled and scored on one of Bell's homers in the fourth. You hear so much, Mark Grace, about what a great baseball town Baltimore is. Oh, man. One of the best in the nation. Well, they still have this beautiful yard, which was christened in 1992. Still my favorite venue. Ball fouled away. You get a chance to play here much? Well, you played a I, meaningful I, game here. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the 93 All-Star game was the only game I got to play here in Baltimore. But this place, is it, it's got such rich baseball tradition. There have been so many good teams and great players that have come through here. And just for, for this city's sake, you really like to see them get this thing turned around. You know, just some of the best players to ever put on a uniform play here in Baltimore. Frank Robinson, Cal Ripken, Brooks Robinson, Eddie Murray. That's just the name of uh, uh, those are just the, the Hall of Fame guys. There's just been so much tradition. Eddie Murray. And you and you'd like you just like to, to see this great baseball city have something to get excited about again. I know it's easier said than done. You're playing the American League East. But you know what? You're playing the American League East all these years. Called strike three. Tatum gets rung up for the second time. But these Orioles fans deserve a, a, a competitive ball club. And I think Buck Showalter is a step in the right direction. Well, now it's time for the Just for Men Keep Your Edge Spotlight. Easy selection today, Josh Bell. First career homer. That came back in the third. And then an inning later, his first career three-run homer. Just as Josh Bell has given the Orioles the edge, you too can keep your edge with Just for Men mustache and beard. Josh Bell delivers again. Is it a third one? It's off the top of the wall. And it's going to be the longest single in the career of Josh Bell. Man, this kid is a lot of fun. Very first pitch. Looking more like George Bell or Albert Bell. Man, a bolt. Just a couple of inches away from being his third home run. Nice play by David Murphy getting it back in and holding the big fella to a single. Do it, son. So Bell, a three for three afternoon. Ryan Roberts looks at one outside. I imagine there are some pitchers you ran into in your career where you were just super, super confident when you walked to the plate. I'm not saying that Josh Bell has that feeling against Cliff Lee just yet, but, man, he's been spot on in oh, three at-bats. 100th pitch of the day is a called strike. Yeah, there were guys certainly that, you know, it didn't make sense. There were some guys that were great that had Hall of Fame talent that you did well against. And then there were some guys that maybe hung around for about three or four months, and yet they wore you out. That's what makes this the greatest game in the world. Ball fouled away. And then there's that guy for the Padres you hit your first homer off of, and you, you retired him the next day. <laughs> Career killer, Mark Grace. That was, yeah, that was kind of shameful on my part. He went on to live a very happy life. Don't feel guilty. Oh, 
So the Orioles got a two-out long single by Josh Bell. One, two, high. You can see Cliff Lee's body language. He wanted that one from Mark Carlson. It looked up. What do you think at home? I think it's just a little bit high. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm a former hitter. <laughs> Nothing's a strike, right? Fouled away again. Roberts has strung together some amazing seasons. Last year, 56 doubles. That's the most ever in a season by a switch hitter. A two-time All-Star. And win healthy. Just a guy at the top of the order that's just so difficult to deal with for a pitcher. First of all, he's a switch hitter. He hits from line to line. He's got some power. He's worked the count full. He's just a tough out. Anytime you can hit the baseball from both sides, line to line, you're tough to defense. And boy, you're just a nightmare for pitchers in their game plan going into the game. Ball tapped foul again. So Roberts making Lee work. And even though Cliff Lee is certainly a confident pitcher, I know before the game he was saying, man, I got to face this guy at least four times. The eighth pitch of the at bat. We'll do it again. Scott Feldman's got to be good and ready. I was going to say, he's probably throwing 100 pitches of his own out there in the bullpen. <laughs> you got to imagine that whatever happens to Brian Roberts, this will be Cliff Lee's last hitter that he will face. You certainly have to look at the big picture, and right now the big picture is going to get Cliff Lee through this one. Roberts turns on one, hooking foul. About two, three feet foul from another run for the Orioles. Well, Gracie, next Sunday, our NFL preseason coverage on Fox concludes as the Steelers head to the Mile High City to battle the Broncos. We're going to get a good look at Tim Tebow. Coverage begins next Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, in high def right here on Fox. Are you going to go with the Tim Tebow haircut that he got? No. No, you're not going to go with no, that. That was, uh, got to admit, big, big fan of Tim Tebow, but that was one of the worst haircuts I've ever seen. What an at-bat by Roberts. That is ball four, the 11th walk of this season, given up by Cliff Lee, and Ron Washington is now taking the long, slow walk to the mound. The Orioles get to Cliff Lee and knock out the Rangers' ace.
Birds giving up seven earned runs, including for the first time in his career, four homers to the opposition in a single game. This is the shortest outing of the season. We certainly don't see numbers like that from one of the best left-handers in the game, but sure enough, these Orioles, they didn't give him the respect that he gets around the rest of the American League. They just stepped into the box and just hammered him. And now they'll face 27-year-old right-hander Scott Feldman, who began the year as the Rangers' opening day starter. He was recently moved to the bullpen, where he has actually struggled in four relief appearances and ERA of 6.10. First batter he will face is Julio Lugo, who's 0 for 3. Two on, two out. And that one goes all the way to the backstop. Runners move up 90 feet. Holy smokes. <laughs> kind of a bad sign. First pitch you throw. Don't know what's going on there, but not that bad of a pitch, but Molina just whiffed it. No chance. Obviously crossed up. I guess that'll go as a wild pitch. Comfortable catching baseball here with Scott Feldman on the mound. Well, remember, Molina came over in a midseason trade from San Francisco on July 1st. There's a called strike. The curveball there, 2 0. Rangers can't quite figure out what has happened to Scott Feldman this year. Led the team with 17 wins a year ago. He's tied for fourth most in the American League. But he has just not been right in 2010. The 2 1 delivery. Tapped out in front of the plate. Feldman's going to have to hurry. He throws. Moreland comes off the base, and here comes another run as Bell scores. Oh, the swinging bunt. Watch Bell come down from third base, and once the throw is made, he just scampers on home. Isn't there a possibility if he turns around? He probably can get him out of third base, yeah. He's probably got him at third base, but in his haste to get it to first. Another run for the Baltimore Orioles, and they just continue to pile it on here. Saying, and who says these guys are in first place in the West? Well, give Lugo a 45-foot RBI single. Now a five-run lead, and Nick Markake is up. Great day for Josh Bell. Gets congrats from hitting instructor Terry Crowley. Oh, yeah. First stand next to him. Now, when you're having a day like that, hitting coaches like to stand next to you. That's camera time. <laughs> Not you. Your game plan would have been good luck. Remember that? Yeah. Boy, had... I'd be shoving you out of frame. <laughs> Line to Andrus, and that's going to do it. But the Orioles tack on another. And we're going to return to Camden Yards right after this word from your local Fox station.
Network. Top of the seventh at Camden Yards. Ferguson still out there. Wheeling and dealing. His opposite number, Cliff Lee, is not. Julio Borbone to left. PA, and there's one down. So, Gracie, a lot of people probably wonder, what do you guys talk about during batting practice and before the game? Well, we mic'd up Warriors pitcher Jeremy Guthrie, and we'll let him explain. So lucky to have him. <laughs> I, yeah, Mike Grace is probably the best there is. Is he not? He's good. I wish he could still come down and play. Well, he probably could play if you gave him a shot. You're in charge around here. Let's go. Uh, you know what I like? I like Grace. Grace? So, yeah, I listen to him a lot in Arizona. Best in the business? He's right up there. Most people are saying that. You know what? I think you were behind that. I was not. I have a feeling Do you were behind that. Do not put that on me. I smell a rat, and I think he's sitting right to my left. I am not smart enough to think of that. You know that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thanks to the Orioles. And thank you to Jeremy Guthrie. Good work. We should put guys yeah. best in the biz next to Mark Grayson's name, right? Can we, can we put that in there on the graphic? And see if we can work <laughs> that in at some point. Oh, between you and Buck Showalter, I think you guys were... Hey... I think you guys are out to get me. Some things never change. That's okay. Elvis Andrews has worked it to a 2-2 count. Buck spent the last few years up with our friends up in Bristol, Connecticut. Analyzing baseball. Ball tapped. Tough play for Bell. Barehanded. It has been a great day for Josh Bell. Well, we've seen the offense, the power. Now we're going to see some defense. Look at the bare hand, all in one motion, the perfect strike over to first base, and to easily get the speedy Andrews. Well, what a great play by the youngster. Why not save it for a national television appearance? He's been a lot of fun to watch. Two homers, a third rip that nearly left the yard. Speaking of rip, Michael Young is going to add some extra bases to his account. He is three for four today, and apparently that stiff neck is feeling just fine. Thank you. Well, you make a mistake. Up in the zone to Michael Young. Bang! Wastes no time, just drills it into the left center gap. And what that does, it gets... The league's leading hitter, an opportunity with a runner in scoring position. Well, Hamilton, one for three on the day, and he has swung at the first pitch. Swung at every pitch. It's first two times up. There we go again. <laughs> I think Josh has dinner plans somewhere. How you like that, Gracie? Uh, see, see, now, yeah. yeah. You, it's a conspiracy around I don't know. Here. I'll take credit for the last part, but not the first part. <laughs> All right, that a boy, Josh. He took one. <laughs> well, sometimes, even when you're one of the best hitters, do you just get a little anxious up there? Does that happen? So. I think so. I think his game plan is, is some, something that, that he's seen in Bergeson before. That This guy throws me a lot of first pitch strikes, so I'm going to be aggressive. Well, he has been aggressive, and it's worked in 2010. Leads the big leagues in batting average. If it weren't for guys like Jose Bautista and Miguel Cabrera, you could be thinking a little bit about a triple crown, but he has just flat out gotten it done in 2010. Great bounce back here. He played only 89 games because of injuries last season. That one way inside. He's just such a spectacular talent. And when he's healthy, he, he changes the way managers manage. Okay, I've got a base open. Do I walk him and pitch to Guerrero? Which is a bad decision for any manager to have to make. That ball taken deep to center. Jones gives it a look, and he'll watch it sail away. Nice try, officer. 27th of the year for Josh Hamilton, and just like that, the Rangers edge closer. They're down just three. 
You know, we talked about the spectacular talent of Slider. Stays right in the middle of the zone. And that is just hit so far. That's almost 450 feet worth of long ball to center field. Watch our police officer right here. Make a play, son. Oh, good try. Rick Kranitz, the pitching coach for the Orioles. Out to have a word with his right-hander. Well, when you talk about Josh Hamilton, we showed you the numbers a second ago. Here's four guys, and if you've got a vote, Mark Grace, which way are you leaning as of right now? Right now, I'd have to go with Josh Hamilton. Oh, Miguel Cabrera, if you ask me, is having the best year. But as far and, and the MVP, if you if you give it to the best player, it's probably Miguel Cabrera. If you give it to the most valuable player, you, I think you give it to Josh Hamilton because he's been the best player on a, on a first place team. The team with the largest lead of any division leader. In the meantime, Cabrera's Tigers are 12 games back of Minnesota in the AL Central. Robinson it's not Cano. His fault. Robinson Cano also is going to is going to get a lot of votes for the Yankees. Might he lose some though because he plays for the Yankees and you've got guys like A. Rod, who by the way went on the DL today with a strained calf because he's got Jeter at the top of the lineup and he's got Teixeira in mm -hmm. there and Posada. And those guys will all get votes, but Cano, in my opinion, is going to get a bunch of votes. He deserves them. To right center. Martakis is in, and that's going to do it. So Josh Hamilton with his 27th of the year, and the Rangers are down just three as it goes up, up, and away. Live forward and buy Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Get a good look at Fort McHenry in Baltimore, Maryland. And well, we have a man down. Scott Feldman warmed up at the beginning of this inning, called for the training staff and Ron Washington. And so he had to leave the game. They were looking at one of his legs, his right leg. And there was no argument. He's like, I am done. Here's the ball, Skipper. That's a shame. So tough year for Scott Feldman. Just got a little bit tougher. And so welcome to the big leagues, Michael Kirkman. 23-year-old left-hander, just promoted to the team yesterday. Down in AAA, Oklahoma City. 
spent the much of the year down in the minors as a starting pitcher. 13-3, and three, an ERA of 3.09, and he can bring it. 130 strikeouts, which led the PCL. Well, a great talent, and hearty congratulations to Michael Kirkman, your big league debut. Folks, you are looking at a very nervous young man. Your first game in the big leagues, your first game where there's an extra deck on the stadium. How nervous are you when it's your big league debut? Well, it's kind of like your ulcer having a baby. <laughs> That's a great visual, Mark. Well, thank you. That's how nervous you are. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, each and every Tuesday, I bring you a new edition of the Cheap Seats on our Lunch with Benefits show. Just log on to FoxSports.com. Check out the Cheap Seats. Coming this Tuesday, it's that guy, C.J. Wilson. Not so sure the Baltimore Oriole will make an appearance. But if he wants to do it from there, I will Skype with him. That's what we do. We Skype with the best in the big leagues. And C.J. Wilson, last time he was on, he brought a script from the show Lost. He's good friends with the producers. No kidding. Yeah, so he showed us one of the scripts. He's an aspiring Hollywood screenwriter. Interesting guy. Were you a Lost fan? Did you watch it? You know what? For some reason, I never got into it. And not because I wasn't interested. I just wasn't interested. So... Well, if I have a, just a little advice for C.J. Wilson. Yes. Keep pitching because you're really good at pitching. Yes. Picked up his 12th win of the year last night, including a career-high 12 strikeouts. Spent the last four seasons in the bullpen. Went five years between big league starts, and look at what they got out of him. So after a brief delay, well, let's see what the first pitch by this young in the major leagues is. Up and in to Ty Wigginton. Wigginton one for three, including his 19th homer. Solo shot that got the birds going in the fourth, and that one lifted high down the left field line. Hamilton giving a good look at it, and he gives it a great effort. But didn't get it. Right off the heel of his glove, he goes all the way into the corner, into foul territory, leaps, and right off the heel of his glove. Boy, you love to see a superstar, and he is a superstar. Give you an effort like that. Big reason why these guys are in first place. Part of the reason they moved him from center to left, which he has played primarily this year, is because he was too busy running in the walls out there, hurting himself. There's a called strike. And that was just a couple of feet away from having a tough debut for Kirkman. Almost a long ball with the first batter, you see. Ball tapped foul. The Rangers will get an ailing pitcher back on Monday when Rich Harden is activated off the DL. He's going to make the series opening start against Minnesota when they begin a homestand, the Rangers. Swing and a miss. So, Michael Kirkman, welcome to the Bigs. You have your first strikeout. Well, congratulations. We've been dishing out a lot of congratulations today for a lot of firsts. Well, that is a beautiful slider right on the back foot. Of Ty Wiggins, and that's a heck of a pitch by the left-hander. I know you're a hitter, mm -hmm. but the up oh, there we go. There's the ball. I was just about to ask why, when a pitcher has his first strikeout, do they not save the ball? Well, they do. Apparently so. Did you? You knew that though. Do they a lot or no? Do they not think about it? I guess they do. I never really thought about it. You're right. Pitchers usually don't. You know, you, certainly as a pitcher, you don't get the first home run you give up. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, that's because so, the guy who hit it that saved it. So I would imagine you get your first win, your first save, and probably your first strikeout. Okay. I'm on board with you. Luke Scott, a good day. Two for three, including his team-leading 23rd homer back in the fourth. The 1-1 pitch from Kirkman. Swing and a miss. And he just reared back and threw some gas just above the belt of Luke Scott right by him. Oh. 
Ball fouled away. The Rangers with a seven game lead in the American League West. Luke Scott, as you can see, he does not want that calendar to flip anytime soon. Ball outside. Four of those five hitters, by the way, that were on that graphic. Left-handed hitters. And Coco Crisp, he's a switch hitter. You lefties, man. You just tear it up in August. I don't know what it is. But... Ball outside. Counts full. The 3-2 delivery by Michael Kirkman. Oh, Called strike go. three. Go ahead and keep that, that ball too, Michael. <laughs> well, Fox Sports is proud to team up with the Breast Cancer Research Foundation during our 2010 baseball season on Fox. The Breast Cancer Research Foundation helps fund the most advanced and promising breast cancer research. Join the fight by texting CURE to 27722 or donate $10 or visit bcrfcure.org. Messaging and data rates may apply. We appreciate everybody's help in that area. Big swing and a miss from Adam Jones. Michael Kirkman, very impressive in his Major League debut here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Do it, son. <laughs> Stop it. I mean, stop it. You think the people down in Lake City, Florida, if they're getting this game, are enjoying it? I'm sure there's a lot of people that are close to young Michael Kirkman probably watching this. And right now, this young man being mean. And he strikes out the side in his big league debut. Helmet slamming. Michael Kirkman, introduce yourself, son. More with the hometown team leading eight to five. 
David Murphy turns on the first pitch he sees from the new pitcher, Mike Gonzalez, hammers it into the corner. Marquez up with it, fires, and Murphy slides in safely, but just barely with a leadoff double. Wow, rudely greeting Mike Gonzalez is David Murphy, first pitch fastball, bang. And Marquecas now an opportunity to show off that rocket arm he's got. Murphy's going to test him this time. A very good throw, but Murphy runs just a little too well and he gets in ahead of the tag. So right back in business are the Texas Rangers. Still have six outs left to play with. First pitch high and outside. Gonzalez, 32-year-old left-hander. Started the season as the Orioles' closer. Has that funky delivery. Catches the inside corner. Gonzalez blew two of his first three save opportunities, then ended up on the DL in early April. Stayed there till July 21st. That one way outside. Since being activated from the DL, an ERA of 1.59 in 12 appearances. And a lot of these Oriole players getting back healthy now for Buck Showalter. Guys like Gonzalez, Brian Roberts. That ball lifted to left. PA, a few paces to his left. Murphy stays at second. And there's one out. Hey, Gracie, you paying attention? I NFL am. season is just a few weeks away, so get your fantasy football team now at foxsports.com slash fantasy. Fox Fantasy Football features new draft rooms, mock drafts, draft kits. It's still 100% free. Play today at foxsports.com slash fantasy. How those cards going to do this year? Your season ticket holder, not the Baltimore Ravens, but T. Sizzle did play his college ball out in Arizona. Yes, he did. He was a... Sun Devil at ASU, the Ravens about to gear it up. But the Arizona Cardinals, the Matt Leinert area is, area, era is about to begin. Mitch Moreland, one for two, walking a single, raises average to 300. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, says Jeff Nelson. He was the man behind the plate last night, and the Orioles didn't particularly like the strike zone. Well, let's see what Mr. Nelson saw. Yeah, that bat got out there a little too far by Moreland, so it's one and one. Ball laced. Jones on the run, dives, and it gets past him. Murphy's going to score. Moreland hits second, and he will stay there with an RBI double. A great effort by Jones, but he couldn't quite glove it. And the Rangers are back within two. Another slider. Boy, that's a nice piece of hitting by Moreland. And as you said, the great effort by Jones... Dives right through his belt. And PA does a great job of backing up, and that holds Moreland to second base. And we're going to get an equipment change. We need a new belt. What is this, like a pit crew? <laughs> Makeup. I mean, how many belts did you go through in your career? Not because the waistline was getting bigger. Well, I was just about to say, is that a is that an overweight no, joke? No, believe me, I'm not the one that should be throwing overweight jokes around, pal. And so we'll send Adam Jones to the dressing room. The brand new belt, a, gr a great effort there. And well, this the is the sort of wardrobe malfunction we can deal with on Fox. That's true. Okay, that's very true. All of a sudden, it seems. Very strange, but the tying run is now at the plate for the Texas Rangers. Blanco, big swing and a miss. 0 for 2 with a run scored. He doesn't have a home run this year, but he sure was swinging for it there. Fouled away. 
again. And Mike Gonzalez got away with that one there. That was a hanging breaking ball. But they're not mistakes if they're not put in play. As you can see, Mark Grace, do not ever count out the AL West leading Texas Rangers. 30 come from behind wins this year. He checked it. And he did in time. There's our guy. Koji Yuhara in the bullpen getting loose. The one two pitch down in the dirt. Good stop by Tatum. How tough is it to pick up the ball off a guy like Mike Gonzalez? Obviously, it's not very difficult for the Rangers this inning, but he's got kind of that delivery where he hides it and holds it. Yeah, he hides it. There's a lot of body coming at you. You got legs, you got elbows, you got a glove, everything flying at you at the same time. That one's high and outside, and Gonzalez just doesn't have it today. And this, this is a situation where he got Blanco to 0-2, and, and then instead of trying to get him out, he's trying to strike him out. And because of that, he's thrown a couple of pitches very wide. Now, all of a sudden, it's 3-2. and two. Blanco loses the bat and the at-bat. As Gonzalez gets the strikeout. Well, he threw another pitch into the dirt, but Blanco, he was swinging for the fences. All three swings, and that time he actually threw it into the fence. Down the third base line, there's the slider into the dirt, and there goes the bat. That's a huge out for Gonzalez and the Orioles. And Ron Washington is going to send up a pinch hitter for Julio Borbon. It's Brandon Boggs. So will Buck Showalter counter with a move of his own? Boggs has yet to have a plate appearance as a uh, pinch hitter. And this season he is 0 for 6 overall. Now Buck's going to stay where he is. Boggs was recalled on Sunday when Nelson Cruz went back on the DL for the third time this season because of an ailing hamstring. The ball's down low. Boggs has spent part of three seasons with the big league team. Originally a fourth round pick in 2004 out of Georgia Tech where he was a science, technology, and culture major. Well, you don't hear the term smart baseball player very often, but Brandon Boggs certainly has to be in that category, and he's done a smart job of laying off a couple of pitches. He's got a 2-0 count. Ooh, he took a big swing and a miss on that one. Yeah, he was very tardy on the 93-mile-an-hour fastball from Mike Gonzalez. That was his best pitch of the afternoon. I guess now you can call it evening. Just past 6.30 local time. Murphy doubled and scored. When Mitch Moreland laced a double to the alley, and now it's two and two. Same pitch, same result. 93 mile an hour fastball right by Brandon Boggs. Now the Oriole faithful are starting to get loud. They want to see strike three from Mike Gonzalez. Boggs stays alive. Washington's bench a bit depleted with the injuries to Kinsler and Cruz. Also, Guzman on the DL as well. Side and the count's full. Elvis Andrus, the all star shortstop. He would be next if Boggs reaches base. Swing and a miss. 
Gonzalez. It was a rocky effort, but he gets the job done. The Rangers get one, but leave a man on. Verizon. The signal is yours. Wield it to transmit anything you want. Verizon. And by State Farm. With 17,000 agents, we've got the best lineup in the game. Well, lineup changes for the Texas Rangers. Josh Hamilton in an 8-6 game has moved from left to center field. Brandon Boggs, who struck out to end the top of this frame, remains in the game in left field. Speaking of left fielders, Felix P.A. digs in against Michael Kirkman. All he did was strike out the side in his big league debut in the seventh. In very impressive fashion. P.A., a couple of singles, two runs scored, stolen base as well. Fouls one away. Bottom of the lineup, the 7, 8, and 9 hitters have combined to score six of the eight Oriole runs this afternoon. And when you can get production at the bottom of your lineup, you're going to score a lot of runs. Old foul. Well, that's a nice little slider. Kirkman looks like it's got some late tilt. It looks like it's difficult for these Oriole hitters right now to see. Way out in front of that one. He's got another two strike count. Let's see if he's got the ability to put away the left hander, PA. PA tries to dump it behind Andrews, but doesn't have enough muster on it. There's one down. Well, the Orioles, there will be plenty of changes in the offseason. Why don't we send it to Chicago, where FoxSports.com senior writer Ken Rosenthal fills us in? Chris, Mark. The Orioles' biggest need is a middle-of-the-order hitter at a corner infield position. Their best bet will be at first base. Paul Canerco and Carlos Pena are potential free agents. So are Adam Dunn, Lance Berkman, and Derek Lee, three players who have spent most of their careers in the National League. Prince Fielder could be another option, but the Orioles will be reluctant to give the Brewers what they want, major league-ready pitching. In that area, the O's want to keep what they have. Well, the Rangers will have a new pitcher. We'll tell you about Frank Francisco when we come back.
Need to dust him off. He has pitched just a third of an inning in the Rangers' last eight games. Maybe part of the reason is because he has allowed home runs to the first batter faced in each of his previous two games. So, Craig Tatum, it's your time to shine. No home runs this year for Tatum. But Frankie Francisco got some great stuff. Got a good fastball, good breaking ball. Former closer for the Rangers. Had 25 saves a year ago despite three trips to the DL, and he delivers strike one. Francisco now one of the setup men for Nikali Feliz, the 22-year-old flamethrower who picked up the save last night. His 30th of the season. Swing and a miss by Tatum. You saw the good fastball to the outside corner, then right behind it. Francisco's slider now. The Orioles, even though they've got eight runs here on here this afternoon and this evening, well, they've been 0-2 a lot. They've done some good 0-2 hitting. Good numbers for the veteran Francisco. Now in his sixth big league season. Called strike three as he painted on that one. So much for home runs on the first batter face. That was a thing of beauty. That was a lesson for young Tatum. Did you mention home runs? Josh Bell with his first one ever back in the third, 394 feet. An inning later, it's a three-run shot, almost the same exact area where it landed. So what did they do? They want to get the home run ball back for Josh Bell, so they asked this guy. And then he's going to go down to the Orioles clubhouse afterward. He's going to meet Bell, get some autographs, etc. His buddy caught the next home run ball, so they're going to go down there together. Oh, that's great. How's that for a meet Josh field Bell. trip? No. Bell turning around from the left side now, trying to hit the third home run of the afternoon. Broke his bat. Moreland dives, stops it, gets it to Francisco, and he gets the out. So Bell's bat has had an eventful day. It's 8-6 as we head to the ninth.
Orioles have a new pitcher on to start the ninth. It is Koji Uehara, the 35-year-old right-hander from Japan, trying to notch his first big league save. Well, he's got some big league sideburns. <laughs> Facing the top of the order. Uehara, an eight-time All-Star over in Japan, inked a two-year $10 million deal before the 2009 season with the Orioles. Andrews slides one to right. Martakis is there for out number one. Well, coming up tonight on Fox at 8 p.m. Eastern, it's another episode of Cops, followed by America's Most Wanted. It's on your local Fox affiliate. You'll probably see Chris and I on both those shows. Or at least some of our family members. One down for Michael Young. He has three of the 11 Ranger hits this afternoon. Uehara, no stranger to the relief role over in Japan. He notched 32 saves back in 2007. Ball lifted to right. Markakis on the track, and there's two down. Two very quick outs for Uehara. And his sideburns. If he gets his first save, you promise me when we're in Seattle next Saturday that you'll grow those out? No. Just checking. They're, they're nice sideburns for, for him. Baseball's leading hitter, Josh Hamilton, looks at a called strike. Good crowd here for the Baltimore Orioles, and they're all on their feet. They like what they've seen from the home team here this evening. And it's 18. How good is Josh Hamilton? My goodness gracious, what a great piece of hitting. Again, goes down, gets a split finger, and just rifles it back up the middle. That is just a thing of beauty right there. Effortless. Third hit of the afternoon for baseball's leading hitter. And now it brings up the ever-dangerous Vladimir Guerrero. There goes Hamilton, and a swing and a miss by Guerrero. Once again, the tying run at the plate. Hamilton now in scoring position for Vladimir. Guerrero has not homered this month. One for four with an RBI double on the day. Another swing and a miss. Now one and two. Guerrero stays alive. And you know Vladi just has a flair for the dramatic. And if you've ever played against this man or watched him play over the years, this is one of the last guys you want to see representing the tying run. Way inside. It's two and two. That one almost got him. And that would have brought the go-ahead run to the plate, but Blotty's still going to stand in there, cool as a cucumber. He looks stressed, doesn't he? <laughs> Swing and a miss, 
Jason Uhara has his first major league save. Josh Bell with his first two big league homers, and the Orioles win it 8-6 to six to improve to 12-8 and eight under Buck Showalter. We'll be back to Baltimore after these messages from your local Fox station.